Hi, welcome to Portage County Matters. I'm Patty Dreyer, Portage County Executive. I think you're really going to like the show today. We're going to talk about libraries and who doesn't love a great library or a great library system like we have right here in Portage County. I want to make one announcement first and then we'll, we'll get on to my guest. I presented the, the volunteer report for 2016 to the Portage County Board of Supervisors on Tuesday the 18th of April and that report is available on the county's home webpage and in that report it is so exciting to tally the numbers and to see that there were 1,492 volunteers in Portage County that gave of themselves their time, their talent, their passion so that the people of Portage County could be served better, could have a better quality of life. And this is all through just our Portage County Government Volunteer Program. As part of that giving of nearly 85,000 hours of service us. We had 48 interns that participated and the interns were coming from educational institutions like the Technical College or the University System. Some were coming from our local community but others were coming from across the state like from Green Bay or, or Stout. We have some interns that um, interact with us or Oshkosh and it's just so exciting to have delved into just specifically the internship program as part of my volunteer report this year. You can read more about that and also uh, um, meet some of the uh, faculty members and academic staff members. I, I list some of our local um, academic members who make those internships possible. And uh, I know the list is a larger list of folks out there, but we included just our local UW Stevens Point and our Mid-State Technical College faculty and academic staff. So thank you to everybody for making Portage County just such a wonderful place to live. And truly, volunteers are at the heart of all of it. So happy Volunteer Month. Now. Larry Othout is my guest on the show today. Larry is our new library director for Portage County, and I'm very, very pleased to welcome you. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> now, you were uh, hired in October last year. I started in October last year, and so I got to do my first Wisconsin winter, <laughs> and so that was fun, and... Um, <laughs> Learned a lot. <laughs> so, Larry, why don't you tell everybody where you're coming from? And it was after the retirement of Bob Stack, our former library director. So we're really, uh, again, honored to have you join us in this community. Thank you. Uh, yes, Bob retired last July, and then the library system started searching for a new director. And I was hired uh, in late fall last year. And uh, I am originally from central Illinois, an uh, Illinois native, uh, but the last 12 to 14 years I was in Indiana working in libraries there so uh, all of my work experience has been in the Midwest and so we've really enjoyed it here getting to meet people and just basically touring the area. We are very pleased to have you you're just doing a, a terrific job and what a great asset to the staff and to the community um, here in Portage County. So um, as you as you bring your Midwest view you know, I always love it when people can bring outside views in and, and help us learn and see through that. What did you, what do you notice in your first few months on the job here in Portage County? Maybe in, in comparison to or contrast to other places? One of the things that I've been focusing on early on has been the planning process. Uh, you know, we get busy all the time and things kind of slide. Uh, I don't think there's been a strategic plan done specifically for the library since probably around 2008 or so. So we're going to try to kick that up and so we can have a focus. Where, where, we, where do we want to go? You know, everyone has this the stereotypical view of the library, but for the future we need a goal to shoot for or we just kind of shoot all over the place. So we're going to be working on that. Um, a lot of meetings, a lot of getting to know people, uh, not only within the library, but also in the community as well, is what we've been focusing on. So, go back to your other experiences in other places. When you come here, was there a big difference in some way, shape, or form, or was it uh, pretty similar to what you would have seen in other places? I haven't been to libraries in, in a lot of other places. Well, the, the last library I was at out of state was in Evansville, Indiana, and it was a, 
a county of about 173,000. We had eight branches. So there was a lot of interplay between branches and you had to keep up on the policies, make sure everyone knew what was going on. Uh, dividing up materials, that's one thing that, that has, instead of just one basic library, you have to serve the entire county. And so that's one thing that I was accustomed to. Uh, the one thing I like, well, one of the things I like about Portage County is it was a little bit smaller than the last place I was at. It was, it's so difficult to get to know people in a larger place, but everyone here has been so welcoming and warm and, you know, supportive of the library and what we're trying to do. So it's been easier to get to know people and understand them and get an idea of what they'd like to see. The beauty of that, Larry, is that that's not an uncommon thing for people to say who do come from other places to Portage County. And yeah, it is. It's great when folks are willing to get to know each other, um, where you are a, a member of the community very quickly and not some kind of an outsider that has to try to, you know, find their way in, if you would. Right. So we have that branch system right here in Portage County. And maybe let's do this for folks on the, who are listening to the show. Let's help them understand how the library system works here in Portage County as if this was uh, a little bit of a seminar on that because many people don't really have an idea about that. The, the, the library system in Wisconsin was quite a bit different than what I dealt with in Indiana. Uh, there all the library systems were autonomous uh, districts that had their own taxing levies and all of that. Here, of course, uh, while the libraries are autonomous units, our funding comes from the county. So the county helps set the budget. The county also holds the purse strings and holds the money for us. Uh, here in Portage County, all of the municipalities own the buildings. So uh, here in Stevens Point, the city of Stevens Point actually owns our library building and the county just leases it. We have an agreement with them uh, for the next eight years or so. Um, but the county does do maintenance and fixing of the building. Right now we're working on the HVAC system, I believe. Uh, so that's a big project and some windows and whatnot. Uh, it's the same thing with all of our other branches. The cities own the facilities at Rosholt and Plover and Almond. And uh, I know the facilities department for the county does a lot of the maintenance and upkeep. So, so folks may say, well, why didn't you mention the Amherst Library? The village of Amherst. They are not actually a part of the Portage County Public Library. Uh, back when the idea was put forth to have a combined library system, they were asked and they, they just elected to remain by themselves. Uh, they are a member of South Central Library System, which we are also a member of, but they are a separate unit and not, not with us. Right, so Portage County government has branches of the library, downtown Stevens Point, the village of Plover, the village of Rochelle, and the village of Almond. Correct. And then, Larry, you get to um, make sure that we are providing materials and staffing those libraries and coordinating with those local entities, those municipalities, to make it happen. And the, the branches themselves, especially the smaller ones, are very important. I mean, to me, that's, that's been one of my passions since I've been in the library business is those smaller branches because they mean so much to people in those communities. Uh, you know, it's in beautiful. a smaller community like Rochelle, it's the school and the library. Uh, and in a lot of places where those have been removed, they've lost their identity in other places. So we try, it's always been a goal of mine to, to give those folks in the smaller branches the same opportunities and the same quality of materials that uh, the larger libraries have. I love to hear that. <laughs> that just makes me, me so happy. And I know that when we made the improvements to the Rochelle Library, even within my terms here as county executive, it was really an economic development, community development project for the village. And to have seen how it's continuing to draw people to give them a community center is really um, an important an important thing to see for a community, a small well, community. In, in a lot of urban areas, libraries are used as basically the center point of downtown redevelopment. 
because they know that'll draw people in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And down in Almond, the thing I love so much about the branch there is it's, it's so tiny. It's a step back in time in some ways with a museum across the street and so on. And the people are so excited when you walk in the door. Not just our staff of the county, but other uh, municipal members that I've worked with in the past, talked with in the past, that would share that with you as if it was the gem of, a, of their community with their museum. And I am really, um, I guess, taken by all of that. Well, and you know, I've never been a believer in cookie cutter libraries. They all have their own identity, their own focus. And for those folks in Almond, uh, you know, they're more isolated than some of the other folks in the county. They may not come to town uh, for a week, week and a half. Uh, so, and the small size also makes it a challenge. Uh, you're not going to find you know, every James Patterson novel on the shelf like you will at Stevens Point. So you concentrate for them on just the most recent, hottest materials. And mm. also, one thing they have done, have, they have really gone to town on interlibrary loan, which is a feature that sometimes people pass up. Let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah, so we have an opportunity to draw in materials from anywhere. Correct. And being part of the South Central Library System, I know you mentioned it before, it's going to be important for folks to understand a little bit more. We pay a membership in to the South Central in order to help us gain access and other resources to our library system without having to ha do it all ourselves. Right. And have it all ourselves. <laughs> right. Uh, South Central is seven counties big. It goes right down the middle of the state from here all the way down to, to Madison. And anyone with a Portage County Library card can walk into any other South Central Library, plop their card down, and, and take any of the other library's materials. But the really cool thing... And is, return them, Larry, excuse me, to any library, return right? Return them to any library. There you go. That's an important one. Um, the really cool thing for the folks in Almond, uh, they have discovered they can use interlibrary loan and they have been growing by leaps and bounds uh, the last couple of years while I've been here. Interlibrary loans coming into Almond last year were up something like 33% and they're already up another 20% this year. So they're discovering they don't have to go to town. The materials will come to them and they just pick them up. So tell, us, tell, tell the listeners, how do you do that? Do you go into the library? Do you, can you do it online and just order it? Can you just talk about how folks can gain those materials into other branches without having to make a trip to a certain library and find something on a shelf? A lot of our services are becoming more and more what we call remote. Uh, so you can go on our uh, Portage County Public Library website, you can look at databases, you can search your genealogy uh, just by plopping in your card number, but you can also order in all sorts of materials. So if you go into the uh, search box, uh, it's called LinkCat. And you can search for the book or CD or whatever it is that you want. If we do not have it, then you can put a hold on it and actually choose where you want it to come. Uh, we have a lot of people who may live, I don't know, uh, Junction City, but work downtown in Stevens Point. They'll just pick it up there. Or maybe they work in Plover, and Plover is closer to them. When they're coming home, they can pick it up there. So they get a notice by email then? Yes, that, you get them that, a notice mm -hmm. by email. The book is uh, in, or the resource is in. I shouldn't call it only a book, because there are many ways, many kinds of resources. Uh, I had one that come, came in the other day, and I got a, a message in my email. It also, if you have it set up, will then remind you when it's almost time to be due. <laughs> oh. So... Uh, <laughs> Some busy people such as myself might, need, might really find extra value in that. Wow. So, uh, but we have access to all of those 46 to 50 libraries all over the central part of the state. So it's a really so, cool idea. So I think the bottom line for listeners, and anybody that just joined us, we have Larry Othout. He's our library director here in Portage County. Uh, new since October and very well integrated already into our community. 
Larry is talking about uh, how to obtain resource materials from the library where we don't have to have them on the shelf. We can order them for you and they will be delivered to the library near you. Mm -hmm. And you can return it to any library you want to return it to within a awesome. certain si system. Mm -hmm. and, and if for some reason someone, in, if you're looking for something really specific and no one in South Central has it, we do have the capability to go statewide or even out of the state to find it for you. How about that? So the world's at our doorstep. Yes. All right, so let's talk about how libraries are changing and then relate that to some of the programs that we're doing at the library. We want to make sure that during the show, anybody that wants to get their children or youth, teens registered for summer programs knows how to do that because that's going to open shortly for registrations. Yes. So, and then also, like, if it's not all about books, okay, it's not all about books anymore in libraries. Many people are aware of that. What are some of the trends that we're seeing? So let's kind of merge all of these lovely topics together, Larry. Okay. So, yes, it used to be all about books. I saw, I saw a statistical sheet that when I worked out of state, and I found one from the 1950s, and the only thing it lists was books. And now our st monthly statistical sheet is three pages long with all of the different formats. So instead of just a regular print book now, we're buying the large print copy, we're buying the e-book copy, buying the audio copies. Oh. So the budget's getting spliced up a lot more than it used to when you just bought books. Um, but every, all these different opportunities are, are kind of diverging so everyone can have their opportunity because I know when I go on a trip I will get on Overdrive which is the uh, mechanism for getting e-books or e-audio books. Just download one to my phone, plug it in and go when I'm in the car. So it's that easy. A lot, lot easier than it used to be. How interesting. So. So then connect that to our programs. Our programs aren't what people necessarily think library programs once were either. No, we still have, uh, we still have the, the usual story times and things like that. But summer is much more about activities now as well. Uh, one of the things that, one of the trends that we've seen in libraries besides the remote services is just a doing place. You know, when we went to school in high school, you know, used to have home ec, they used to have shop, that kind of thing. Uh, for a while it dropped off and as a, a place to make and do things, the libraries kind of pick that up a little bit. So uh, they're always doing a lot of crafts, a lot of things for the kids to, to actually do physically in addition to talking about books and stories and whatnot. Uh, some of the summer activities we've got, there's going to be a science show for the kids. Uh, there's also going to be some animals. Uh, some baby animal shows that come in. Uh, so those are all going to be on our website shortly. Some need tickets, some do not. Uh, so uh, make sure you notice that most of the ones in Stevens Point need tickets. Uh, so the, the room won't be overwhelmed. Uh, but <laughs> or we, the staff won't be overwhelmed. Or the staff, <laughs> yes. They are, they are they're getting ready for it. They, they start planning summer uh, as soon as the other one's over. So they start planning in the fall. Uh, so they're getting close to their time. Uh, but we also have coming back the bubble guy who is always a very popular attraction. He will be back and that will be at Century Theater so we can pack a lot of people in there. Uh, so library programs aren't always in the library no. which is the other key point for folks. We actually, we actually do a, a uh, book club at one of the local restaurants. Uh -huh. We are also uh, working on a science fiction book club that will also be at one of the local businesses. So no, we are not just all in the library now. We get out, we see people, uh, we, we try to make contact with them where, wherever they are. We do a lot of school visits. We've all we've done school visits, but that's still a big thing as well. But it's starting to leak over to the adults as well. Mm. So. I think of it in a lot of ways like a summer camp your programs are a lot like summer camps for kids. They just don't spend the overnight. It's like a day camp right. thing, right? And, um, and there's always something to learn and to grow on and to become excited about that learning, I think, is what it's really all about, so that they can become lifelong learners and then um, continue to use resources provided through libraries and other 
venues for the rest of their lives. It, uh, the, summer, the summer experiences will start uh, right around June 5th, so almost right before the kids get out, and uh, will continue for about eight weeks until the end of July. So there'll be lots of fun for everybody. We have an adult summer activity schedule as well. Uh, so they'll be able to participate and get some prizes. So that went over extremely well last year. Uh, for the kids, I think we had uh, 6,100 kids participate last year. Hmm. So. Hmm. so let's talk about the age levels and then how to register in general anyway. Uh, as, as I think they, they go as low as they go, uh, we have a lap set. Uh, lap sit program for the really young kids and uh, we have a lot of teen programs we'll be having our uh, summer book sale in July and the teens always help us with that and there, there are some uh, activities scheduled for them outside of the book sale um, registration should be online at our website probably uh, in the next couple weeks great Great. And we'll have the website across the bottom of the screen here for folks that are watching on, on YouTube or And they can on, always on call and, and ask for directions on how to get there. Right. And then what's their time window to close those? Is it an ongoing registration or if you didn't, or is it first come, first serve, right? Uh, okay. Like for some of the events, like the Bubble Man and things, we like people to have tickets. Uh, if there's room, they'll still be let in. Sure. Uh, some activities that require some, some materials or whatnot, we want to have enough for everybody, so we ask that people uh, register. But uh, for the most part, we'll try to get you in. All right. And then if I remember right, there were teens that were involved in building their own leadership skills because they were helping with some of the younger children's programs. Is that still yes. the case? Yes. We always have teen volunteers that do that. We also have a teen council that, that awesome. works with our staff and, and helps develop that area. We have, we're fortunate enough to have a really good teen area up on the second floor yes. of the Stevens Point Library. So they're very helpful. So speaking of the second floor, I think I would like to make sure that everybody is aware that but our library functions as our job center too. So if you have online applications to complete, you don't have a computer, or you don't have good um, internet connections at home, you can come and complete those applications at, at the library. And, and that was uh, one of the things that we've kind of taken on. Uh, you know, first off, we were the reading place, and then as computers started coming, uh, we sort of took that on as a library place to come and look at computers and get help with those. And now we're really diving into workforce development uh, because we're the place people come when they need to fill on that online application in a lot of cases. Uh, you have people who work their entire life and now they're out of work. They didn't have those skills before and now they need help because a lot of, a lot of companies only do the online uh, applications now. Mm. Downtown in Stevens Point there's a special room upstairs near your office that is where the old books are. Talk to us about that room and gaining access to have the opportunity to explore those books. And then maybe, Larry, you and I could each say a couple of things about a couple of our favorite books. Ah. Not necessarily ones that are located in that room, but just ones in our life. We have, we have a local history room. Uh, which does get used quite a bit and that's one of my favorites because I'm I'm into genealogy and local history so I use it too um, so uh, if you want to explore the history of Portage County or some of the nearby locations or maybe your your family history we can help you uh, get started in that we also have online access to ancestry.com mm. and heritage quest that will help uh, find your relatives and, and get you started in genealogy. So uh, it's a really cool room with a, a lot of things maybe you didn't know about Portage County in the past. <clears throat> One of the things that I was doing in some family research was we had come across some old letters from my mother mm -hmm. who used to live in 1951 and 52 in Stevens Point. It was her first big job out of Plainfield uh, as a Tri-County High graduate. And she was working at, at Hardware Mutual, which is now Century Insurance, right at the downtown location, um, that beautiful historic building. Anyway, she lived just down the road. We knew that. But I couldn't find the address anywhere. Then it, someone told me that the addresses had changed in Stevens Point over a certain period of time. I think it was the early 60s, if I remember right. And that if I went to that place, that room on the second floor of the library, downtown Stevens Point, I could find a book 
that would have given me the address comparisons, the old address to what the new one is, so, so I could see if that house still existed. Indeed, I was able to do that, go visit the house, take a picture of it, send it to the rest of my family, and actually, it's just a few houses down from our county courthouse, so it was oh. really, really cool to know mom lived there, and that was her first big time to come to the city and, um, and to relate it to the stories in our family lives. Genealogy and local history are, are really, really big, and if you need help getting started, we have several staff members who are big on history, uh, big, especially big on, on local like houses and things like that, yes, so we yes, can help them out. Like Wendell. <clears throat> so, what's your favorite old book? I, oh gosh. I or a favorite, maybe it's not an old one. Uh, I, w I was really big into Dr. Seuss. And my all-time favorite was If I Ran the Circus. Wow, I'm going to have to read that one, Larry. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe bring it to the next one-to-one -one meeting we have in the okay. county exec's office. Just I'll, because I'll, I don't know that one. I'll, I'll do a book talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and mine is Wake Robin. John Burroughs um, was one of my favorite writers, and he died in 1921. And I've Done, spent my whole life kind of tracking on John Burroughs and, and uh, gathering his books and I'm working through reading them all. There's something well over 25 of them that I am, I am um, working through as I, as I go through my life. So it's really well, exciting. I, to I always used to go to my hometown library, do a lot of the Hardy Boys and, and that kind <laughs> of thing and Wizard of Oz books. Awesome. Well, look at our contrast. I got a little Wake Robin. You got a little <laughs> Dr. Seuss Larry. This is great. Well, listen, now, let's just, we have about five minutes left in the show. What I want to do is to talk with folks about that self-checkout system that we'll be beginning to work on in the library, if we could. One of the things where we're trying to go is provide an opportunity for our staff to maybe help people more out in the, the stacks area where, where the books are. And one way to do that is implement what we call an RFID system. Uh, there are little tags that go in the books. We have some now, but the tags that we're going to put in uh, in the coming year will allow them to use automatic self-check. So kind of like you see at the department stores or Target or Walmart or something like that. Um, uh, hopefully with, with less confusion, but uh, we don't want any <laughs> items it. in the bagging area or anything like that. Um, but you'll be able, if you find three books you want, you should be able to come to the self-check machine, lay them on the pad, put on your card information, it should check them out without you even touching them. How about that? Uh, so when right do we expect, Larry? I know that it's a capital project, and I wanted to wait till you came so that we verified that this was what you wanted for the future. I know we have maybe a minute in the show here, but what would be the time frame that that folks could expect that we would have that? This year, we're doing what we call weeding the collection, uh, looking for books that may be out of date or bad information or just plain old and not used. Next year, we'll start putting the tags in, and in 2019, we'll get the machines up and running. There you go. Well, the future of libraries is um, going to be vastly different from what we know today, and what we know today is so different from the way it used to be. But one thing is for sure, libraries are absolutely fantastic, and thank you so much for making possible through the programs and collections and the outreach uh, all of all of the worldwide open of learning for us all right thank you thank you Larry for joining us next time on Portage County Matters we're going to talk about noxious weeds and about our new ordinance in the county and how to keep yourself safe with some of those roadside weeds way big contrast <laughs> to today's show but looking forward to having you join us thank you